You're listening to the Brilliant Breakthroughs Podcast with Maggie Magan. Hi, small business owners. Welcome to the Brilliant Breakthroughs Podcast, where we focus on creating brilliant breakthroughs for the small business owner. FYI, this is also the same name of the number one Amazon best-selling book for small business and entrepreneurship. The good news is you can find this book in paperback form as well as ebook form. Just so you know which one it is on Amazon, type in Brilliant Breakthroughs for the Small Business Owner, and the subtitle is Fresh Perspectives on Profitability, People, Productivity, and finding peace in your business. And okay, I wanna tell you, since some of you have been listening for quite a while, that today we're, we're going to, uh, well, I'll share something so we don't confuse you. The first book in the annual series came out in 2017, and it's, it's the blue one. And we thank you for making us a number one bestseller. And for the past 55, 56 episodes in the podcast series, we've been interviewing the 2017 authoring team. And now we switch to the 2018 authoring team because the book is going to be released in November of 2018. And this book for 2018 has an emerald green cover. And today's conversation is with a number one best-selling author from the 2017 book that came back to share a little more wisdom with you in the 2018 book. So this is somebody you're already familiar with, but we're changing the topic to address what he wrote in the 2018 book. And I'll, I'll save the mystery for just a moment. I should probably introduce myself first. So rock stars, my name is Maggie Mongan, and I'm the creator of the Brilliant Breakthroughs annual business book series and a number one best-selling author for business. I'm also a master business coach and trainer and uh, commonly known as a small business success influencer. Today, here we go. We are honored to have a 2018 author and number one best-selling author, Mike Raber, with us to talk about your business's peacefulness and, and getting some stuff straight for your own self so your business can thrive. So, Mike, welcome. Hello, Maggie. How are you? And hello to everyone out there. We are good, and we're going to uh, help everybody understand a little bit about what this chapter is about because it's very different from what you wrote in 2017, right? Yeah, pretty much so. Okay. Not a great idea, but a little bit different twist. Totally, totally. So, Mike's chapter is in chapter seven in 2018's book, and it is titled Discovering Your Business's True North. Mike, this chapter was actually packed full of a lot of information. So, Considering this is the first conversation for 2018's book, I thought it would be good if we'd start with our listeners at the beginning of, you know, what, what is this chapter about? So you want to give us a, a little insight as to this chapter's topic? Sure. This chapter I'm talking, kind of going back to the true north, how to position one's business and if we, whether we are in, currently in business or if we are at a point in our life where we would like to take a passion and dream, something that we're doing and start a business with it. How do you, A, create the business? How do you put the necessary steps in place to design the foundation around that business? But most importantly, how do you figure out or determine the true, your actual full true north of your business, the why? And in the couple of the previous podcasts, I talked a little bit about discovering your why as well, but I think I went into more detail, and I, the fun part about this chapter and doing it was I sharing a childhood story, like walking down the lane, and how oh, okay. a lot of us have done. 
Hold, hold on, Mike, you're breaking up a little bit. And I think this is important for you to say, um, so tell us about the childhood story because that's the premise of all of this. Yes. So the childhood story itself was when I was in seventh grade and I'm going, I'll just kind of share the highlights of the story. I encourage you to read the chapter for the full story. Yes. But I, my class had a candy bar a contest or fundraiser selling candy bars and they turned it into a contest. And like many of us, when we were in school, or if we have kids that are in school, they have fundraisers who could be selling candy bars and today's where it might be popcorn, Girl Scout cookies, all sorts of different things that this, our school or our church or other organizations we're part of will have fundraisers. And then as kids, we go out there and we try to sell them and raise money for the fundraiser. Well, they're passionate about the school and raising money for the school, but also they turned into a contest and I really wanted to win the contest. And I really wanted the prize that came from the contest. So I was determined to win it. And being 12 and selling candy bars in a school in an area that for certain reasons, it was a bit of a struggle. And for that, I'll leave you to read the chapter to find out why. But I knew I had to find something that would set me out above the rest and give me a true defined value proposition or marketing edge. I knew who my target market was. I knew what my value proposition. I had candy bars that the only way you could buy, buy them was through a fundraiser. You couldn't go down to the local dime store and buy candy bars or the target and buy these candy bars. They were only distributed through fundraisers and they were very good candy bars and well liked by the community. So that was my value proposition. But still, I had to find a way of bringing it to market. I had to be able to sell more than anybody in my class. And that was, in essence, the process that went into doing this. And I talked about how I went to the library and got books on marketing, and books on business, and read them trying to figure out if I could get a few nuggets out of each book and put that into place, then that would help me reach my goal. And okay. That, and okay. So now I want to pause for a moment. I'm going to interrupt Mike because what Mike just said about how he went to the library to learn about value propositions, et cetera, et cetera. These are all business terms that as small business owners, we are familiar with, or we should become familiar with, but the significance of Mike's story and, and why it's, why it leads this chapter is because he did this as a seventh grader. And, and just pay attention to that. Seventh grade. What, that's like age 12, Mike? Yes, I think I was 12 at the time. Great. So, so I just, I wanted to slow you down for a moment, Mike, because I think it's really important for everybody who says, oh, business is, it's hard. And yeah, it is hard. But if a seventh grader is motivated enough to go to the library back in the day where you had to come through catalog cards, yeah, and some people might be listening to this not even knowing what that is. That's fine. Um, but to be able to go research and know to go research at such a young age, that's motivation. So maybe the question is, is our motivation in alignment? Okay, which, which we're going to come back to after Mike shares just a little bit more about the story. Okay, so... I knew I had to learn how to sell the candy bars. And I was kind of an odd kid because I was interested in business. I do have to admit part of motivation was driven because yes, I wanted to win the contest. Yes, I wanted to support the school. But also the school I went to, we had a program that if you went to the library, you could get out of study hall. And I didn't really <laughs> like study hall. <laughs> So I had a little bit of, as a 12-year-old, study hall, going to the library and reading interesting books, kind of a no-brainer. <laughs> there just happened to be interesting books that would help me win the contest, which fed into the other motivation, so why not? Right, right, why not? Besides the fact I knew my competition was in study hall. Figure oh. out where your competition is and don't hang out with them. Rule number one. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay, great. And I think you share a little bit about that in the, your chapter. Yes. So this is, so, this, this is a beautiful story. And I want to encourage everybody. Mike is an excellent storyteller. So you will appreciate it. 
Well, and, and the other thing I had to figure out is if I'm going to sell a lot of candy bars, I had to be in an area where people could afford to buy a lot of candy bars in a short amount of time. So that played into place. I had to be able to find a neighborhood that would be open to what I'm trying to do. And in business, like Maggie talked about just a couple of minutes ago that Oftentimes in starting a business or growing a business, we get caught up in the weeds. We try to overcomplicate the process or we look at something and say, man, that seems hard. I'm not sure if I want to do that. If you are truly in alignment with your two north, mine was simple. I wanted to win a contest, which meant I had to sell X amount of candy bars to do so. Very, wasn't that complicated of, uh, of an outcome. It was just how was I going to do it, and how was I going to do it in the most efficient way possible for a 12 year old. And for me, because I was 12, and because I needed to find a neighborhood that would be open to what I was doing, meant getting on the city bus and tr going across town to a neighborhood that would fit the need that I had. Okay, so, hold on, Mike. Was it don't, little... tell don't tell too much. Okay. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> so. So in oh, essence, I what I would say, the poor guy, he doesn't even know what to say next because I'm clipping his story so he doesn't reveal it all. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, yes, I guess they'll just have to read it to find the missing pieces. But I, the point of, I guess, what I was trying to say was though we're going to have challenges in business, if we simplify the process and find the most efficient way to get from point A to point B and follow that path, success is going to come quickly and we're going to be able to realize our goals and move the business forward without nearly as much struggle as at first it may seem like it is. So again, don't get stuck in the weeds. Find the easiest way around or through the weeds and follow. Stay true to your true north and follow the path that will get you to your goal but without overcomplicating the process. Exactly. And, and that's why... Um... I think your chapter is so important to small business owners because you you give us the story. You walk us through the story of what you did as a child and, and how you just took it step by step. And I'm not going to say if, if you won or not because everybody needs to read that. And then the lessons that you learned along the way to do this effectively and and how you simplified it so you could um, do your best to achieve the goal. And, and to me, that's, that's the important message for small business owners is what you said a moment ago, we overcomplicate things or we don't reach out to get the best help that we can get mm. to help us accomplish our goals. And then we just, we settle and, and, Settling isn't fun. It actually becomes frustrating over time mm -hmm. and disappointing. And that's the shame because there's plenty of small business owners out there that have big dreams and visions and want to do great things for the world. And they end up leaving their business and going to get a, a job for someone else because they didn't slow down to think it through like you did as a 12 year old. So now Very that I said true. that, what's you? why do you think this is an important uh, chapter for small business owners, Mike? Well, I think the story is a great example of how I, I could have, could have um, learned the lessons that I learned through the process and achieved what I achieved through doing that and stopped there. Or I could have continued to grow and take those lessons with me into adulthood. And that is exactly what I did. So even though the reason why I learned it was for one purpose, years later, I ended up finding myself in business and experiencing a lot of the same challenges as an adult, as a young business person, as a small business person that I did as a 12 year old. And because I chose to learn the disciplines necessary, learn the skill sets necessary as a 12 year old or as a teenager growing up, and then put them in place as an adult, it allowed me to grow that business and make that business very successful and stand out above the crowd and grow other businesses through the process. So 
sometimes the things that we think we need to know, we already know. We just have to find them and draw them out from inside and put them in practice and put them in place and do it. And, and if not, take that wisdom that you already have and go find your guide to help you. Exactly. Yeah, get to that destination. Yeah, and, and yeah. your chapter demonstrates that beautifully, as well as you give some really great tips and lessons that you learned along the way. Um, so that's absolutely wonderful. And Mike, I, I know that um, we'd like to talk even longer, but I have one more question for you. I, and the good news is we're going to have five other podcasts opportunities, episodes for you to dive into particular points of your chapter a little more deeply for everyone. Mm -hmm. So in keeping that in mind, I, here's the question I have for you. Oh my gosh. You are a wealth of knowledge and that is an understatement. <sighs> yeah. Um, Mike's smiling right now. Uh, you know, I get a video on Mike, but you don't. And I see him smiling and he's like, oh, wow, I'm own And he's slowly letting that absorb and he's starting to own it right now. I see that happening, which is pretty cool. Um, he's such a humble guy. The question I have is out of everything that you could write about, why did you try uh, choose to write about this this time? Because I think staying true, well, the title kind of says it all, staying true to your, or finding your true north and staying true to that path. As small business owners, it's so easy to get distracted. You and I were talking about that earlier, about how we have a lane that we belong in, whether it's our business and where it fits in society and the community around us, whether it's where we fit inside our own business. And it's very easy to Small business owners tend to be a jack of all trades and I hate to say master of none. It's very important that as we enter the small business arena, as early as possible, figure out where you belong. What are your skill sets? What do you truly enjoy? Why are you in business? You're again, you're why you're true north and surround yourself with other people whose skills are your weaknesses. And as you build out your business, as you continue to move the business from one level to the next, continue to grow the business, but from the lane you belong in. Try not to get caught up in, again, the weeds and get knocked off course. Stay true to your lane, true to your expertise, own your expertise. And if you do, success is, can only come. So, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. What else do you want to say about that, Mike? Oh, I was just going to say, so that's why it was so fun to share the story because at first it was just kind of walking through this fun story of a time when I was a kid. And then I talked about how as an adult, I was able to incorporate that into my business and how it helped with that business. And as I was going through the process of telling that story and it happened even during the first book that we did together. And when I wrote that chapter that I found it's so important as small business owners, we have such a gift for the community around us. Mm -hmm. And if we go out and own that and stay true to our purpose, continue to grow, continue to learn, yes, we're able to live a great life. We're able to provide for our family and create the freedom, the flexibility in our life for which we and our family deserves. But also we are able to bring so much to the market and the community around us through our small business. So I guess the takeaway, if I were to leave them, would be don't take a small business. We are all out there working together. We're building an incredible machine, incredible business that, if done right, can do a great thing again for ourselves, for our family, for the community, and by which we'll be able to live a great life. So. I'm extremely passionate in helping other small business owners through scenarios like this chapter, this book, empowering you with the skill sets that you need so you can, A, not make a lot of the mistakes that I and other authors in the book have made through their own journeys, but also empower you to speed the process ahead so you can enjoy the life you deserve. 
Amen. Amen. And that's, that's actually the crux of what I wrote about in uh, 2017 for my chapter as well is, is to simplify your success so you can accelerate it and serve the way that you choose to serve humanity, not just in your business, but your, your personal interests as well. So thank you, Mike, for bringing that full circle. Wow, nice bridge. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Okay, so here, here we are, listeners. This is how you can learn more and engage with our number one best-selling author, Mike Raber. Start by reading Chapter 7, Discovering Your Business's True North in the book, Brilliant Breakthroughs for the Small Business Owner. That's volume two for 2018 with the emerald green cover because you'll see both the blue and the green cover on Amazon if you're listening to this after mid-November of 2018. And then what we want you to do is gift your business's performance by accepting the invitation that Mike has at the end of his chapter. It's on his author's page. And there's all sorts of social media handles for you to get a hold of Mike and connect with him. But right now there's something else that I want to share with you. And it's really cool. If you go to your app store and you download our books app, that's designed to talk about the book and the authors and what we're up to. So you can engage with us like our podcasts, um, our blogs, and even events that we're doing. Go to Brilliant Biz Book in your app store. And the Brilliant Biz Book is all one word. If, if you break it up, you're not going to find it. So Brilliant Biz Book in your app store. Download it. It's a free download. And then click on Ask an Expert, and you'll see Mike Raber's name. Click on his name, type in your question, and he'll reply back to you. Pretty cool bonus, huh? I think so. So what I want to do is say thank you for your time and your wisdom sharing today, Mike. You're welcome. You rock. You rock. Thank and you. I know everybody's going to enjoy your stories because you are a great storyteller. Thank you. Anything else you want to say as we wrap up besides what? Enjoy? Apply? I guess enjoy, apply. Um, there's a whole lot more really incredible podcasts on this channel. So go through, listen now, listen often. Okay. And listeners, um, Mike is in a remote location. So thank you for being patient while there's been a little drag at certain points in the recording. But um, I'm pretty sure that we got everything that we needed to get there. Mike? You're a rock star, and thanks for helping small business owners become a rock star. And listeners, we appreciate you listening to the Brilliant Breakthroughs podcast, where you learn how to create more brilliant breakthroughs for your small business. Until next week, shine brightly.